Welcome to Drinking Bros Sports, brought to you by KillCliffCBD.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros. Holy shit. Sports are back, Anthony. Sports are back. Well, one sport. One sport. That's all I need. That's all I need in this world is one sport. (laughs) I'm like Nas. All I need is one mic. I need one sports. We got we got our favorites, uh, Kansas City DJ, with us as well. Gats is back on the show. What's up, Gat? How are you? You wanted to get the fuck out of the quarantine. I did. I'm tired of the Midwest. I'm tired of people freaking out. Tired of them hoarding toilet paper. Yeah. I just had to leave. You were like, I'm yo, out. can I come down to the beach in North Carolina and hang? Yeah. We're yep. like, bring drugs. Are we going to be Sold. able to, uh, is the toilet paper thing going to be an issue with these bees that are murdering us now? No, the murder bees? Yeah. The murder hornets, I should say. Yeah. Uh, who knows, man? I'm tired of of all the bullshit that, that Asia's providing us with right now. The last thing I needed was a two-inch murder hornet that saws the head off of other bees um, and then drags rats out. Did you see the, the, the video of the, the hornet killing the rat? Yeah. Where, where are we? It was a fucking culture. That sounds like goddamn the Hunger Games, some of those yeah. genetic, genetically engineered animals they had. I'm sick of all of that bullshit with Asia. Put the travel ban in forever. I don't give a fuck. I think I don't need, need to go anywhere other than America. I think we need to build a wall around China. They already started one. Yeah, they, they a great one. Let's finish that shit up. Some might say it was it was a great one. They were trying to keep out the Mongolians. We can just build it all the way around <laughs> and keep them out. We can finish it up. Yeah, we can finish it up. Uh, Gats, congratulations, Kansas City Chiefs. Oh yeah, world chumps. No big deal. I always thought that the world would end if the Chiefs won a Super Bowl, so now it did, so it works out. Yeah, pretty much so, right? Mm -hmm. Chiefs won, and then all of a sudden, holy shit, we're in a worldwide pandemic. Absolutely. Uh, I want to give myself a pat on the back. I picked the Chiefs before the the, the season started. That was 8-1. to That was a lot of money for Daddy. That's good, though. I'm glad that we won you some money. How would you feel watching that game? Because it was, what, 21-10 to with uh, about eight minutes left in the fourth quarter. Did you still believe? Absolutely. You saw that game against Houston. Mm. I did, but like I'll, I'll be honest, because I called I called you during that fourth quarter, and I was like, man, if they don't get that stop, if they don't stop the 49ers on that mm. drive with about 7.30 left, it's game over. I mean, that that's fucking it for them. Um, and then the spread. The spread on that game uh, was what I was most what, worried about. What was it for you? Um, uh, we got the spread. I teased it down. I got it for six and a half, Okay, if I remember correctly. And I was Ooh. like... E- even then, I was like, I'm not going to hit this, right? Right. Because with two touchdowns, congratulations, that's 24-21. And I was like, ah, there's no way that'll happen. Um, a friend of ours <coughs> had teased it up to, shit, man, uh, it was Xander. Mm. And it was like, I don't know, eights or something, whatever it is. You, you, you start buying points, you can add, you can up your, your dollar amounts there. And uh, they still covered that as well. I couldn't believe it. It was, the great, it was one of the greatest seasons of all time. Um, gambling wise, it started off a little rough for me because Mahomes was hurt, the Chiefs were hurt. Fantasy right. football wise, I kind of fucked everything up. But uh, they made a monster comeback. They ended up getting that stop, and then they smashed him at the end. I mean, absolutely. I think it was over when San Francisco went down to the end zone and celebrated their entire squad. I'm just like, you guys just got to stop doing that. There's still plenty of time left, and I'm into heart attack football. So let's do it. Were you at the game? I was not. I told everybody I was. How the fuck, were you not at that game? Dude? Because I wanted to be back in Kansas City. I'm not really one with. Uh, I, I don't really like Miami that much. I mean, it's fun, but not for one of those kind of events. So stayed in Kansas City, and it was really cool because I got to watch with my dad, who obviously got me into the Chiefs, and you know has been a huge part of me being a Chiefs fan. So that was more important. Uh, he got super high and dipped out uh, second second quarter. So uh, He didn't see them win. Uh, he did. He saw them win, but just not at the actual Super Bowl party. So, you know, we tried wow. that. But I was with a couple of my really good guy friends. And, you know, it's just it means so much. But, like, it was surreal. And then I got to go celebrate because, you know, bars were still open. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just went there. And it was very much like we're just going to wait for the parade. And then the parade, mm-hmm. I was up for, like, 72 mm-hmm. hours partying. So How was the parade itself? Uh, I was very drunk. So I woke up at, like, I didn't – I woke up. I kept – being awake um 5 a.m at liberty memorial packed which is really packed <laughs> and the photos you know people always say like those parade photos i feel like sometimes they uh don't do them justice but kansas city was out there in full force i mean bad weather um horrible weather actually 
and you know yeah. a lot of restrictions with how people people could park and get down to that area so i mean all odds stacked against them kansas city fans are still out there yeah but Had that it. never stops them i mean no they fucking rage dude oh, they, absolutely what, what was it after the royals won <laughs> people just parked on the goddamn highway yeah like not, their not on the side no. of the road on the highway on the highway got out of the cars and just walked down to the fucking to like PL and some other places. yeah so, i just yeah, take yeah. one of my friends down there it was like the the drive of shame the next morning like where is your car and it was one of the sketchiest neighborhoods i was like what in the hell are you doing she's like it's a rental who cares so yeah i mean like i i think the parade went pretty well minus the high speed chase and yeah it kind of kicked falling off. out of trees high and speed chase kicked off the day there right yeah yeah it's yeah, like yeah. Beautiful. 730 or i was six, right there 6 45 or uh-huh. 7 in the morning or some shit tinder is like the is like rental cars that's <laughs> ah, a rental that's ah, tinder you know yeah yeah it's you don't really care all rules are off at that point it's absolutely like, all right cool yeah we'll do anal i mean it's tinder uh who cares <laughs> who cares um, we got Jan, John Anik on the show tonight. Uh, he's calling the fights on Saturday nights. Whew. Man, I'm amped. I, I have not been this amped in a long time for a sporting event. There's a lot of reasons to be amped about this. The NFL draft was amazing. We had a great <clears throat> time. Daddy won 24-4. and four. Humble brag. Uh, or just complete brag. Whatever, man. You guys won a lot of money, so did I. Um, but with this... Uh, I, I, it feels different, man. It's live action sports. People are going to be knocking each other out, kicking the shit out of one mm. another. And uh, that's what I like to see. God damn it. Um, we're going to be raging here at the studio just, just to do it uh, because sports. You know what I'm saying? Sports are finally back. So John Anik is going to join us in a second. He's going to be calling the fight. I, I'm nervous for him, uh, to be honest with you. We got some sponsors who pay for this whole fucking shit wagon to be on the air. Then we're going to get Gat's female picks. Because here, we believe in misogyny. Absolutely. Mm. And that's that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? We have John on to make the male picks. And then for the female picks, obviously, we yeah, have Yeah, which luckily is just on. like, you know, one little yeah, spot. So. I was, he was, I, we're, we're not having him doing the female cards. We want a real woman to do Thank it. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because we don't discriminate. Uh, but we're also misogynists. Um, so. You can do both. You can do both. I, life is about balance. Like, you don't want to be one side or the other. You want to be, you know, fucking middle way. As the English call it, the middle way. Yeah, Mary so, Lou Retton said that life is about balance. Um, mm. Yeah, I'll do <laughs> there. No. Uh, could have been uh, Carrie Shrug then. Nope. Allie Raisman. I can go on for female gymnasts. For I don't know. I'm impressed. Used to be a fetish of mine. Clearly, used to be a big fetish of mine. Uh, as always, our sports show is brought to you by KeelcliffCBD.com. Best in the biz. Promo code Drinking Bros. Gets you 30% off. Are they still doing 30% off? Until Mother's Day, yeah. So you've got like four more days left to get that deal. Four more days. Get your mother some CBD from KillCliffCBD.com. 25 milligrams in every single can. Three amazing flavors. You got grape, you got orange, uh, and you got the mango up in that mogwai. Let's face it. Moms out there for Mother's Day deserve a break. Uh, If you get them some CBD, the kids won't know they're on a break. But we will. We will definitely know. They ship right to your house. Corona free. Corona free. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. uh, And you get 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. Use the promo code DRINKINGBROS for 30% off and free shipping. That's important. Free shipping on cans Mm -hmm. could could really set you back a pretty penny. Uh, KillCliffCBD.com is here for you during the quarantine Drinking Bros promo code and uh, free shipping on that. Uh, next up, D'Anthony, we got ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. It's a ghost bed, man. Goddamn I mean, right. I don't know is. what else to even fucking say at this point. If you don't have it, I feel like, I don't know. You're like a, you're like a, a kid walking around at school. You got a TI-83 calculator and everybody else has TI-85. You're a fucking loser. Loser, dude. Loser. Don't be a loser. Don't be a loser. Get yourself a comfortable mattress to lay down on and... Book. Maybe make a little baby during the quarantines. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. As always, they got the 36 month pay as you go program. No interest on that. So you can get a mattress for like 25 bucks a month, man. Uh, it's the best. Uh, highly recommend the new Ghost Lux mattresses. Those are phenomenal. But the adjustable bases and the pillows, everything is 25% off. And they're going to do that through the entire pandemic at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros last but not least we got MacWeldon.com. Ooh, ooh! how comfortable is their shit it's uh pretty goddamn comfortable god damn right yeah. it is dude uh I, mean, I like their stuff i like i i have their shirts underwear 
I just what got mine I in the have? mail this morning. I ordered and, a hoodie, uh, but I haven't received a hoodie yet. Yeah, man. Uh, I Dude, I ordered short sleeves. Today, it ended up being a little cooler in Wilmington, mm-hmm. North Carolina to go with a long sleeve. Uh, you're from Kansas City, Gat. You said fuck it. I don't. You don't really care. Yeah, this is basically you know summer vacation. For yeah, us. it for was us, freezing it's when like, I left. Hey man, I got a long sleeve on. But uh, Mac Weldon, it's got some of the most comfortable clothing on the planet for dudes. They got uh, jogging pants, t-shirts, all sorts. Yeah, fucking button downs. You name it, man. Men's essentials. Men's all of it. essentials. Things that as a dude, you're not going to go out and shop for yourself. You might as well get it online. Go to MacWeldon.com. Yep. And uh, you can sign up in three phases, too, man. First one, you get free shipping. If you order over 200 bucks, boom, dude. You can be a gold member. Mm-hmm. Get free shipping for life <laughs> on that. Uh, boxers, you name it, man. This is shit that you're always going to use the rest of your life. Go to MacWeldon.com. Use the promo code Drinking Bros for 20% off some of the finest uh, products in the biz at MacWeldon.com. Love their tees, man. Comfortable as shit. Yeah. Uh, what's Father's Day is in like six weeks, too. Yeah, and some might argue that's the most important day. It's not. Ah, it Except, is. No. It might be. No. It might be. No. Uh, if you're a father like me who uh, really, really takes care of uh, the family, you know? I don't believe. Brings the bacon home. If, if Jesse came in today, mm-hmm. right now, and said, Ross hasn't seen the kids in six weeks, I'd be right. like, yeah, all right. I, I believe that. Not a prayer. Uh, Father of the year. No. Father of the year. Dude, no. uh, the fucking the GM of the Colts told you. He's like, look, I've never seen a better father than you. I think that was his exact words. I think he just said that your kid's always going to remember going to that football game. <laughs> <laughs> I think he said, man, if, if I could be someone different in this life and be a, another father, it would be you. It would be you. Uh, I'm proud of you. I'm proud mm. of you. Gats. Um, all right, let's start with KC real quick here because we're, we're, we're sponsored by MyBookie.com uh, on this episode. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposits. Um, first gambling we've had back in a while. Also, some football odds are up. Um, and uh, we're, we're gambling heavy, heavy on, uh, on Saturday night. But I'm also dipping into the gambling here on, on the NFL as well because um, uh, the schedule's coming out tomorrow night at 8 p.m. We already know who everybody's playing. Right. We don't know the order that it's in yet. Um, what is the over under for the Chiefs this year? Eleven and a half. Eleven and a half. Yeah. That is a monster over. Why do you think that is? Besides them being Super Bowl champions and bringing everybody back, we just really <laughs> haven't any, lost anybody yet. We've just added more weapons and we've added more reassurance for Mahomes. So at this point, I don't think that anybody can stop us. So Hilaire was a big pickup at the end of the first. God mm-hmm. damn it, man! I feel like Patrick Mahomes should just have prima nocta rights for all of Missouri. He might. I think he, he does. Would actually. you take him inside you? Uh, if he just didn't talk, that'd be great. Yeah, his voice is. Yeah, the weird. voice just kills it. It's It'll like it's like David. It's it. like David Beckham for me. Uh, really? Yeah, he's a good. He's a really good looking man. But once he starts talking, I'm like you're a fucking pipsqueak, dude. Shut up. Yeah. Uh, who do you who do you got? Um, who's in your division? Run it down real quick. We got the Broncos. Mm-hmm. The, the Broncos are much improved. That's a great young team, man. They had a, they had a, another monster draft, right? And uh, they get a bunch of great young players. We'll see how Drew Locke ends up being. Yeah, right. uh, he's a Kansas City native. So I'm it's high always on the Broncos, but in like two or three years, not necessarily right. this year. Uh, who else is in that division? Yeah, Chargers too. Chargers uh, garbage. They're running Tyrod Taylor out there as their starter. There's this year. two wins. Uh, no, it's it's going to be Herbert. They're going to. You think uh, he's going to start? I think. He probably I don't think will. so. I, he'll probably come in week three or four. Yeah, probably later in the season. But either he's way, start that's that's fine. That's two wins for you. Who else? You got? And we got the Oakland Las Vegas Raiders. The Oakland Las Vegas Raiders. I still man. can't get used to it. It's just no like the Oakland. Can. It's very difficult. And I know it's been the L.A. Raiders and everything else. But I don't know why they're going Las Vegas instead of just Vegas Raiders. Like eh. VR, because that's what the Golden Knights did. It's not Las Vegas Golden Knights. It's yeah. the Vegas Golden it's the Knights. Vegas Golden yeah, Knights. that would make more sense. Yeah, it would make way more sense. Nah. Why the fuck would you say Las Vegas Raiders? Like, there's some other Vegas that's pretending to be Las. You never know. Maybe there's, there's a, a Las hit, Vegas, a, Missouri. A gang, yeah. I think. Maybe you know, there's a gang. That doesn't... No one cares. No one even knows that that's a thing. They could get we sued. Do. We do. Uh, 11 and a half wins. Um Man. That is so many fuck. I mean, that's, that's a 12 I can see us season. easily going 12 and 4. I can, for too. For sure. Um, it's just about keeping that momentum after winning a Super Bowl. They're so fucking good. My biggest knock on the Chiefs last year, and look, I, everybody knows I picked them before the season started and that happened. And I'm picking them again next year. Spoiler alert. Um, I, it's hard to bet against Mahomes. But the way they play is like Dan says all the time on the show. They play like the Warriors. Like they just don't care until the third or fourth quarter yeah. because they're that fucking good. And uh, that's the only thing that worries me with 12 wins. Um Look, you guys came from behind a lot last year. 
So you're, you're but you're going to go with twelve. I'm going to go with twelve. I absolutely think I'm that gonna that go is with possible. Twelve as well, reluctantly. We get to play so your Falcon, so you guys should definitely come to that home game. I know. I, I'd love to. Hopefully, there'll be fans in the stands. I don't know what's going to happen. There, there will be fine. I hope so. Clark Hunt isn't a pussy. He'll open up Arrowhead. The uh, they released the 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 schedules as far as like um, who's got the hardest, who's got the easiest. Mm-hmm. The easiest is the Colts next year. The hardest is the Falcons. I don't know why we didn't go to the goddamn playoffs. <laughs> Why the fuck are we playing all this? They're still mad at you guys. It's crazy, dude. It's absolutely crazy. We shouldn't be playing the Chiefs next year. That's that's no. We have the hardest division in the NFL. Now we got to play the Chiefs on top of it. Yeah. Thanks. Our over under for wins, I think, is six and a half. Um, What are you going to take? I'm taking the over. I think we'll go at least seven to nine with Todd Gurley. If look, if Gurley plays amazing, yeah. Lights out. We, sky's the limit. We'll Absolutely. see. But I don't know what his knee is going to do. I mean, uh, if but he, I'm going to take the over. If he plays amazing and they do well on offense. You're going to end up having to eat some crow about them taking defensive players in the first round. I am. But that would be worth it. I, I honestly, I don't think, I, I think that's too great a risk to count on Gurley coming back after I two seasons. Too. I did like, too. What was it? Uh, the season before last, it was like game 12. He, he was amazing up until game 14. Yeah. And then it was 12 or 14. Yeah. I don't know which one it was. Yeah. Year. Even in the playoffs, he didn't show up at, at much at all. So I don't know. He was hurt. That's a huge, that's like how. We were at that Super Bowl. And we were, remember, yeah. I, I, I leaned over to you and I was like, did something happen to Tom Because they weren't Gurley? even giving him the ball. No. So I, I, if there had to be something like a physical injury that everyone knew about on the team because they just weren't giving him the ball. Yeah, man. It, it was strange. So hopefully he can come back. We'll see. I'm going to take the over on the Falcons anyways. I'm going to take that over on the Chiefs as well. Um, and I, I, think it, I think it will be 12 on the dot. I think that's actually a, a very Vegas-y bet because um, I think it's going to be 12 on the dot for that. Mm-hmm. Obviously... We'll do a full show uh, going overs, unders, like we always do for, for the NFL. But since you're here, Gat, I wanted to get that out of the way. And then also have you call the female fights on Saturday night. Who you got in that one? Well, right now it's you know Mother's Day weekend, and I wasn't really thinking about storylines because I don't think the UFC needs a storyline right now. They just need people actually uh, doing anything on live pay-per-view. Yeah. So we got Carla Esparza versus Michelle Watterson. Michelle mm-hmm. Watterson's been dubbed the karate hottie. Which anytime I hear a nickname like that, I'm like, I'm absolutely intrigued. Uh, but, I'm always in on a sexy nickname. Right? And then we got, they're kind of playing Carla Esparza off like just like, eh. Yeah. You know, she is, you know, technically favored going into this. But, you know, I we've been hearing more from Michelle Watterson, which traditionally PR wise, I remember the Holly Holm, Ronda Rousey fight. And the mm-hmm. only thing I could say about that was like Ronda Rousey could not stop doing PR. And that completely distracted her from the fight. And uh, we all know how that worked out. But it's kind of interesting to see going into this because uh, the the height uh, disadvantage for Carla is strong and mm-hmm. Michelle Watterson doesn't really have much of a ground game like Carla has, right. but she has a rear choke. So I don't know. It sounds dangerous enough to me. Um, she's been doing all the PR stuff and running around and talking more about how she's going to be able to win this fight. And we haven't heard much from Carla. And honestly, if she's going to get Watterson down on the ground, that'll be a miracle because she knows what's going to be happening. All right. Uh, who you got, D'Anthony? Um, I'm taking Esparza. Okay. Because I agree that all the media bullshit surrounding uh, the Karate Hottie, which is a yeah. stupid fucking nickname. Great name. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I'm no. not even adopted as my own. No, it's dumb as shit. Like, anybody, the any, Karate Hottie Patterson. Anybody that would allow themselves to be referred to that way has mm-hmm. some issues, I think, egotistical issues. And it's going to play – like, she's going to absorb all this media attention and do – She's going to, against the advice of her fight camp, take sh- uh, on interviews that she probably shouldn't. She's probably been doing that this whole time mm-hmm. and waste her time and get distracted and then get fucking knocked out because that's what happened to Rousey. Yeah. Well, you know me. I get caught up in the hype. Uh, I love a good story, and I love a great nickname. Uh, my favorite players of all time are Deion Sanders and Ricky Henderson. We get a, we get a picture of uh, Ricky Henny behind us. Um, I don't mind someone talking themselves up. Matter of fact, I love it. I love the karate hottie. I'm going to ride her. I'm going to ride that fucking horse on Saturday night. I'm going to bet the karate hottie uh, on mybookie.com. That is who we're gambling with Saturday night, kids. Go to mybookie.com. Promo code DRINKINGBROS will double that deposit. Um, and you can bet with us or against us. We've got John Anik coming up uh, who's calling the fights. He's going to give you what what his thoughts are, and we're going to make our bets uh, so you can bet with us 
on Saturday night as well. Go to mybookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros. Doubles that deposit. And if you're, look, if you're not into the UFC and you just want to gamble, the Drinking Bros Casino is open, mm. brother. You can play slots, blackjack, poker, all that other shit. Uh, if you type in the promo code Drinking Bros Casino, that's great for the casino, and that doubles in a half your deposit. So you get 150% back of your deposits uh, using the promo code Drinking Bros Casino. But for me, I'm betting the fights. I'm, I'm Amps Live Sports is back. I'm using the promo code Drinking Bros. I always use my own promo code. I might even enter in another email address, whatever, man, <laughs> because I get fucking weird like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, go to mybookie.com. Promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposits. Jamie, let's hop into the interview with John Annick, shall we? Welcome to Drinking Bros. We've got one of our fan faves mm-hmm. on the show and one of our personal faves in real life. Yeah. If I was ever like, if I was going to switch and uh, divorce my wife and marry a dude, it would be John Anik. Well, well, luckily John's got a twin, so you could marry his brother. I could, and if look, and if John, if you didn't find me attractive, you could, you, you would never have to tell me, and I would just stay married to your brother, and yeah. I would probably never know, right? And go ahead and marry him because he hasn't had a haircut in two years. Lovely locks go down to his shoulders. I don't know what he's doing with that thick Jewish lettuce, but it's growing like an inch a day. Thick, so. thick Jewish lettuce sounds like a punk band or some shit. It does from the like we early eighties. Yeah, but uh, hey, it's good to be with you guys. I consider myself a, a recurring guest now, making a third appearance, and yep. uh, you know it, it feels like a big week. Obviously, UFC wise, when mm-hmm. when Dan texts me. So here, not we only UFC wise, but just sports wise, mm-hmm. I, and I I think. This, for me personally, huh? and I think the world, having live sports back is a huge sign that the world is coming back, or at least the United States is coming back. Do you feel how big this moment is? Because I, I, I certainly think it is for America, just for the psyche of America, that live sports are coming back. Yeah, I would agree with that. And uh, I think four days out, it's starting to feel bigger and, and doing media and talking about the magnitude of the event and the atmosphere of the event, as opposed to just live production elements and fighters and fighting. Mm-hmm. That makes it feel big to me. But I got to be honest with you guys. You know, we thought we were going live April 18th. Yep. I've been diving into the prep as best I can. All of my fighter cards are done. I've had more time to prepare for this show than any when I'm in a cycle doing three and four weeks or five and six weeks or whatever it is. So we are, are just ready to go, but certainly it's not lost on me that uh, we'd like to be pretty clean and pretty crisp. We've never had a perfect show. This would probably be a good, uh, a good Saturday to have one, but I don't know, man, there's so much shit to be done. Colin fights for me Saturday and Wednesday. I have 48 athletes to immerse myself in. So I'm not so much thinking about the magnitude of the show until right now. So thanks for putting the pressure on. Me. Yeah, and, and that's what we love to do. You know, when we had uh, Travis <laughs> Pastrana on the show, we had him on hours before he was uh, recreating and beating all of Evil Knievel's mm-hmm. jumps. And I told him, I said, look, uh, at the end of this, um, just just say uh, goodbye to the people. And he's like, why, why do you want me to say goodbye? And I was like, well, this could be your last interview. And I really <laughs> want people to know. And he was like, you know... I never thought about dying until now. So with you, John, that's what we love to do to our guests yeah. is put more pressure yeah. on them than is already there. Because let's face it, everybody in America is going to be watching this uh, and around the world. Yeah. I have a feeling this is going to break the pay-per-view records. I, this is the this. I think this might be pound for pound the the biggest fight card I've ever seen in my life. Ever like, in the history of UFC. Like Showtime Pettison, Showtime Pettis and Cowboy Cerrone are the last fight in the preliminary card. That's not even the main card. <laughs> Those two guys, like I expect to see probably five to seven knockouts out of these fucking 13 or so fights. Right. You know, Dana White is reluctant to get ahead of himself and guarantee fireworks. But of course you've seen him this week. When you mm. look at certainly the main event with Ferguson and Gaethje, yeah, there's just on. no possible way that fight won't be one of the top 25 most violent slash bloody in UFC yeah. history. I just don't see that as a possibility. Yep. And you're right, depth-wise, you got like six or seven UFC main events. Part of that's a byproduct of the fact that the show's on April 18th, April 25th, uh, May 2nd. You know, a lot of these shows went away, and they all got loaded up here. Mm-hmm. But legitimately, Pettis and Cerrone could easily headline an ESPN Plus oh, UFC yeah, fight for night sure. right now. Uh, in their current form. So we're excited, obviously. Uh, and Francis Ngannou's on the oh, card. He's man. on Mike Tyson. Uh, yeah, man, all hands on deck. And uh, I get my COVID-19 test tomorrow. We'll see what the brain swab feels like. We're, we're ready to go. Yeah, walk through, walk everybody through what's going to happen exactly as far as testing goes. 
Um, obviously, there's not going to be any fans there, uh, but they're going to have enough tests on hand for all the fighters, trainers, and you guys. What does that look like during fight week? When do they test you and how often? So I'll tell you what I know I will be driving. I mean, how how fortunate am I, guys? I mean, are you kidding me that this is happening in Florida? Yeah. Uh, so I'm right up the road. Fly, I mean, I was prepared to, to drag my fat ass to Lamore, California, but we'll take the five-hour drive to Jacksonville. So when I get there, before I can even check into the hotel, I believe I will be having a, an antibody test of some mm. kind, uh, the finger prick, and then the COVID-19 test will be screened daily between 7 a.m. and noon, I believe. Uh, for temperature and things like that. Uh, I believe there's a quarantine that we have to go through upon arrival, you know, in mm -hmm. our hotel rooms or whatever. So I feel really encouraged that their ducks are in a row and maybe more in a row than they would have been April 18th. Uh, so we're just ready to go, man. You know, it's like I understand and have respect for the virus as best I can. I'm not a respiratory therapist. I'm doing all the things I can possibly do to make myself as safe as possible. But I've essentially been doing 15 hours of childcare every day for 60 days. I cannot wait to get in the car. <laughs> yeah, look, Dan and I are the same way because typically we travel to the biggest sporting event every two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. We've right. not been able to do that, and we don't know when we're going to get to. Uh, but you, on the other hand, are calling the fight. I am so jealous right now. I, I wish I could be there. I would pay any amount of money to be at a live sporting event right now, and you get to be calling the fights. I know I've said this before on the show, but you have the dream job, even more so now. Um, is, is Rogan coming out as well for this fight, or is it just, is it just you? Yeah, no, Joe will be there, and Daniel Cormier will be with us as oh, well. Nice. Oh, I don't believe we'll great. be sitting. Yeah, I don't think we'll be sitting at, at the same broadcast table. I think it'll be interesting how they try to handle like an opening on camera if we would share the same space or what we'll do. But yeah, I think that a lot of people just are behind Dana and anxious to contribute and maybe have less anxiety than we would have uh, on April 18th, candidly, with these extra three weeks. You know, Florida is no picnic and it doesn't look like it's going to be great down here in terms of the virus. But uh, yeah, man, I'm just ready to get back to work. I just feel like a deadbeat, even though we've been prepping this whole time. Like, I thought one day I wanted to, like, golf every day. Now I know I don't want to do that. You yeah. know, I think I just kind of want to work. Yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point. I wonder how many people are rethinking their retirement plans right now. You know what exactly. I mean? Like, if I can't, like, I, but that's a that's a common thing. People who uh, are older and then retire and they don't do anything mm -hmm. die. Yeah. Like, always. And if you see like an actor, like there, some actors have left public life, and, and like Gene Hackman, a couple of other ones. Yeah. But if you see a person that's like a captain of industry and they're super involved in shit, and all of a sudden they, that for whatever reason, in their late seventies, decide to quit doing stuff, and, and they die immediately. Yeah. You know what I mean, like we need purpose in life. Look at Bob Iger right. at Disney. Uh, you know, he quit, uh, and boom, he's right back in the fray again. There's something about the chaos that he loves, and I imagine in your job in particular. It is nothing but chaos, and I couldn't imagine stepping away from that um, like you have for this long. Right. Well, and, and therein, I think, lies the rub for me. I think for a lot of us professionally, you're trying to crystallize what it is you like to do. I know what I like to do recreationally, right? But professionally, what do I like to do? And it's not being on a desk necessarily, being a highlight machine in Bristol, Connecticut five nights a mm. week, right? It's doing live events and ideally calling those live events as opposed to being on the desk. And it took a while for that to crystallize for me. But once mm -hmm. it did, my motives and my aspirations started to change and go in a play-by-play -play direction. And then the UFC approached me in 2011 with an opportunity to call half their shows. And uh, it was like drop down from the sky. So, yes, there is absolutely something that is addictive about the live event space and doing play-by-play -play in live sports. And uh I don't know if I could go back to doing the desk five days a week. I love what you guys do. I love radio. Mm. I love being able to be me. But um, th you're right. There's a, a special energy, even without fans, yeah. on Saturday night that is going to be in that building. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, speaking about what you love to do, uh, you, you went viral. You went viral in a massive way. I have seen a meme of you, Rogan, and uh, you know the one I'm talking about where you both, you're all screaming. You are right. still fully in it. The other two had checked out. Rogan had checked right. out of that. You were still calling the fight. When I looked at it, I was like, there's the professional in there. Like, yeah. you were right in the middle of that photo. How many times has that gone on around the world? And how many of your friends have been like, holy shit, dude? Uh, this oh, is it's everywhere. Crazy. 
crazy with every possible caption on it for every <laughs> profession imaginable. And uh, what's interesting about that reaction is it was really the byproduct of you thinking fighter A, Drakkar Close, is going to knock out fighter B, Benil Dariush, and then Benil Dariush knocks out Drakkar Close. Yeah. So there's a very quick ebb and flow that results, I think, in that type of drama. You're right, though. I got to stay in the moment and finish the call. And I want to say this for you guys so that you have the audio. One of these times I'm going to pass that, right? Because there are times when, when I don't breathe properly. I mean, most of the time I'm not using my diaphragm or whatever that apparatus is. And I do believe one of these times, you know, I see stars sometimes. I think I'm going to lose it one of these times and just go back in the chair. So I just wanted you guys to know I'll be okay. But if it happens, you guys will have had it. Well, first. I feel like Cormier will be able to hold you up. Yeah, let's hope so. Yeah, let's, let's hope, hope so. He's yeah, a, he's well, a heavyweight. When I when I was watching it live, I was like, man, I, that was the best reaction of all time because you guys were going through what all of us fans were going through at home, like screaming at the television. Um, and I'm hey, so happy that moment was captured. This this is an artist rendering. Ah, oh, <laughs> oh <that>. shit! <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Who sent you that? The great Dosbrack. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So, uh, oh, so I mean, good. Can you it, right? So there it is. <laughs> yeah, that sorry picture. For audio, sorry for the audio, folks. We love you first. No, right? absolutely. But uh, that picture went around the world. And uh, I, again, I was screaming at the TV during it. Um, that was one of the greatest moments, I think, in UFC history, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it'll live forever. Crazy, man. And, you know, we I talk about the desk versus doing play-by-play. -play. Imagine going back to, uh, you know, calling a regular season college basketball game, right? Yeah. And again, certainly you're in that moment. I hate to, I'm not trying to cut down on that. But for me, I mean, this is, this is combat sports. There's, there's just no equal. Yeah. No, no, there really isn't. There really isn't. Um, before we get to the cards here, we get a, we get a sponsor uh, that finally we get to gamble with. Uh, MyBookie.com, promo code Drinking Bros doubles your deposit. We are betting in all these fights. This is the first thing besides the NFL draft that we've actually been able to gamble on. Uh, let's get your insight. Would you mind running down the cards with us? Um, who's up? I would, uh, who's? I would be absolutely honored to do that for you. So no Korean baseball action for you. No, Ross, we don't. I'm glad you brought that up because we've, we've had some listeners who are like, hey, man, they're so desperate to, to bet on shit that I, I, I refuse to tell the audience to bet on things that, that are coin tosses like that. I can't tell you who, who the Korean baseball players are. Therefore, I'm not going to tell you to put your American dollars on that fucking money, like on, on those fucking sports. Um, but with this, absolutely, 100%. We're all in on Saturday night. I've actually been joining a number of tontines. Oh, yeah. Tontine is where everybody puts money into an interest-bearing account, and whomever is alive last gets all the money. Yeah, that's pretty much I, what we're down to. I, I feel like that's a really good uh, gamble for yeah. me because I will absolutely <laughs> murder you for the, uh, an amount of money that's smaller than what you might think. Yeah, $38 is what Dan well, murders for. It yeah. depends on how hungry I am. <laughs> I, I got to yeah. tell you, and, and then I'll rifle through some of these UFC lines and, and obviously get your thoughts, but when my handicapper who I subscribed to sent along a free play or a, you know, a subscriber play on Korean baseball last mm. night, yep. seeing that pop into my phone, you know how happy that made me? <laughs> Just finally go to mybookie.com and place that goddamn bet. You know, it's the first time <laughs> that I have placed on a non draft box, you know? All right. No lie, by the way, real quick, no lie, I'm trying to get them to do a prop bet on RBG and what her over-under is for days because she's back in the hospital today. <laughs> Um, and we're, we're working on it. They've got other celebrity deaths. That's how desperate it's gotten because Vegas is shut down. So it's real. It's real. People if are betting on Korean happy, baseball. If anybody can make that happen, I have faith that you guys can make that happen. So uh, <laughs> I'm going to start just at the top of the main card real quick for you. So you got Greg Hardy, former NFL standout, minus 210 versus Jorgen DeCastro, who is plus 170. That's the heavyweight opener. I think Greg Hardy deserves more respect from fans for the work he's putting in. I think he deserves less respect from Vegas. Jorgen DeCastro, uh, I think, hits just as hard as a plus athlete. He's not a former NFL sack guy, obviously, but uh, I think that fight's more competitive than the odds would suggest. I agree. And uh, the thing with Greg Hardy, and we talked about this last time uh, you were on the show, is you get to see his work ethic and what it's like behind the scenes. And everybody has said this guy works his fucking ass off and he doesn't have to, to be honest with you. He's got a ton of money left over from the NFL. Um, 
this to me is one of my favorite cards because I actually like watching Greg Hardy fight. Um, whatever yeah. he's gone through in his personal life is what he's gone through. I'm going to take Greg Hardy in this one. Are you taking Castro to Castro? So I am laying off because I have the call of the fight, but I try to give you as much intel as I can. And I do believe that the fight isn't properly priced. I think that Hardy deserves to be the favorite, just not in that minus 210, minus 220 range. So. Sure, sure. Uh, who are you taking, Dan? I got Hardy in this one. Uh, Hardy, for sure. We actually watched him fight. Um, we did. God, what was that guy's name? Was it Gordon, the former defensive lineman? Uh, uh, or was it the yeah, Tuesday uh, night? Yeah, Tabar scored. Yeah, yes. Tabar scored. That's it. Yeah, he's at the. Uh, that was at the one of the Dana White Tuesday night contender series uh, fights. Oh. Man, I haven't seen a whole lot of people in person punch like this guy punches. It is. It's. It's. It's like you see these welter bantam even up to lightweight guys hitting each other and like, damn, that must have hurt. But then you're talking about a fucking gorilla. Like yeah. this motherfucker is like six foot three. 200 plus pounds and he's all of his weight is coming behind every one of these punches and i was i was watching it and i was trying to pay attention to his technical skill because I, I just wanted to see how he had developed as a fighter and i couldn't because it was so vicious it's like holy shit if any one of these lands this guy's gonna die yeah and i'm gonna say gorilla in a positive sense here like it, the strongest animal in the jungle as opposed to anything else because God knows the fucking PC police are out there and will cancel you for anything these days. I am uncancelable, by the way. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I've been talking shit for so long that it doesn't even matter. It doesn't point. matter, but uh, Greg Hardy, we mean that in, in a positive no, sense that for dude's Greg a Hardy. Fucking beast, he's an animal. Man. Just watching him fucking punch. And he's not like he's not up on his uh, uh, tiptoes and he's not back on his heels. His balance is great, and I think that's a function of you know, being a, a defensive lineman for all those years, you got to really have great balance and lateral movement and shit. I think a lot of the heavyweights that are purebred fighters, like that's all they've ever done athletically, probably don't have some of those skills like he does. Right. You're right. And not every heavyweight can crack necessarily. Not yeah. everyone is as naturally powerful mm -hmm. and not to your point, every one of them can generate the power technically in the right way. Right. But yeah, like the way bodies drop when mm -hmm. guys like Greg Hardy hit them, Austin Lane on the contender series as well. Mm -hmm. There's no denying the power. Real quick on Hardy, though, it is crazy, right? He was the only guy in the UFC to fight five times in 2019. Yeah, yeah. He was qualified in his debut and then lost a win because he used an inhaler between rounds. Yep. We still don't know exactly when you – can stop or start using an inhaler on fight night, by the way. Can you still use it in the locker room? I thought that would have given us some clarity when everybody oh, was banging boy. all over Greg Hardy for doing that, but it's just been crazy. Like, this guy can't avoid weird circumstances. His his past transgressions are well documented, but, yeah, I mean, he lives in the American top team dorms. He's all in on his MMA career, and uh, we'll see how it goes for him against DeCastro. Uh, next up on the pay-per-view main card, fellas, featherweight Jeremy Stevens. 33rd UFC appearance Whew. taking on Calvin Cater Cater out of Methuen Massachusetts the minus 250 betting favorite so Jeremy Stevens made his UFC debut on his 21st birthday in 2007 33rd UFC fight could be the first UFC fighter to reach 40 UFC appearances but a two to one underdog here another all action fight uh there will be blood who do you guys like yeah man uh speaking of there will be blood Dana White promised us he said look I'm going to give you the best card of all time. Please stick with me after that last last card was canceled, right? He delivered on this. All of these have the chance to be the fight of the year, uh, potentially. Uh, I'm with you on Jeremy Stevens. I mean, look, he's got a record of 28 and 17 overall. And uh, anybody who's fighting that much is just a, a gamer, man. And uh, it, it's tough to bet against him. I'm, I'm going with Jeremy Stevens, me personally. What do you think, D'Anthony? Um, I mean, look, he's – to me, he's like a, a cowboy, you know. He's a guy that will fight until the bitter goddamn end. Yeah. Like he's going to – he's – it's like that old joke that Dennis Leary used to, to tell about how if you actually try to kill an Irishman, you got you better kill every 100% of them. Cause they're they're family. you got to dig yeah, up the whole fucking if there's like a, family if tree. If there's a sliver of a fingernail left, he'll fucking cut you with it and you'll get infected and die. You know what I mean? That's the kind of guys we're talking about here. It's going to be like – we all know some of these great fights, like a lot of them the Cowboys been in, for example, uh, uh, Griffin Bonner back in the day, which in, in large ha has bears a large responsibility for putting UFC on the map as a combat sport the way it is today. Like that fucking bloody fight at Ultimate Fighter. I yep. think j the, the, the ratings for the next couple of shows after that, if you look back, were fucking exponentially larger because that was crazy as fuck. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what people like. I, 
I'm, I don't like – I don't dislike Khabib as a person or anything, but the way he fights is it's like – boring, yeah. It's like the Patriots to me in their style of football. It's boring. I don't care if they win or not. Uh, and that's you know a I mean? Patriots fan we're talking to. Well, and it's funny you say that because I'm in the minority of Patriots fans that loves all this shit with Brady and Belichick being separated. Mm -hmm. I want to see how they do without the other. I'm not rooting for the Buccaneers at all, (laughs) uh, but I'm excited for a regular season that has suspense. And I hope that doesn't sound arrogant, right? Like when I was a Patriots season ticket holder, they were the laughing stock of the NFL. So Mm -hmm. I put in my time in the 80s and 90s and never got any fucking wins. So, but yeah, I'm excited to see week to week what Belichick can do and be able to maybe even bet on the Patriots because they're not favored by 14 points. No, you know? so, right. you're going to get some great you're spreads. Right, Dan, Dan, you're really right about Jeremy Stevens. Like in his last fight, he absorbed a body shot that was so crippling that <laughs> I don't know if it would have been the end of my life or if it would have put me out for six months <laughs> yeah. or whatever. But he went, he came back and won the third round. Yeah. And I've said this to you guys before, but it truly is a mental and physical toughness that mm-hmm. I can't relate to. You know, he, I work he's, out a little yeah. bit. I can't relate to these guys. Yeah, you know? he, that dude's a monster. He, he's like, a monster. There's zero quit in his body or his personality. Whatever that is in a human being, it exists in him. He should have been a Spartan warrior or some shit. That body <laughs> shot, by the way, look, it went. It looked like it went right through his pancreas. I mean, just right through it. You, you felt every single organ inside your own body when you were like, oh, my God. Uh, brutal. So, uh, Brutal. So, uh, hey, real quick, Florida guy, yeah. are you going to go to any Bucks games to see Brady and Gronk? You know, I hope they both do well. I mean, I guess I would entertain taking my daughters to see Tom Brady. But, you know, my mom got offended that our podcast even wrote a tweet that said Tampa Brady or Tampa Bay in it. So, uh, (laughs) no, I'm not in any great rush to see. And candidly, I hope as a team they do. (laughs) (laughs) They're over under in Vegas is eight and a half this year. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. That's not. That, I thought it would be much higher for Tampa Bay. I was surprised by that. Yeah, I think they win nine games. I haven't seen how I'm their schedule you. falls. I think it gets released tomorrow. But uh, yeah, no, uh, tomorrow night. Yeah, it's, it's Thursday I'm night. Yeah. To, I'm excited to see what Tom can do. But yeah. you know, at the end of the day, we're all aging, right? I mean, <laughs> well, you don't know those pills I'm taking aren't working. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, next up on the fight, Francis is up next, dude. I love talking to you guys about Francis and Gano. He's the Minus best. That's 50. the funnest. So he's minus 280, actually, excuse me. Jarzinho Rosenstrike plus 220. So this was to be a heavyweight main event on March 28th in Columbus, Ohio, over five rounds. Now it will be three. So Rosenstrike was the rookie of the year last year. He won all four of his UFC fights and then decided, perhaps waywardly, to call out Francis Ngannou. <laughs> Obviously, that expedites his path to heavyweight title contention but they don't get a lot of requests for Ngannou because he is the scariest combat mm-hmm. sports athlete in the world right now in my mind. And this is like your third fight? I mean, how this guy could be headlining. I, it's it, This is how crazy this card is. Right, it speaks to the depth. And you're right. This is the deepest fight card that I have ever been assigned to call. There have certainly been some crazy championship triple headers back in the day. And I remember at times they've trotted out an all heavyweight main card Mm -hmm. in UFC 146. There have been some cool special things, but not a fight card like this. And uh, especially a fight like this that, you know, could easily be for an interim heavyweight title or a main event. Yeah, you're getting this obviously as the third fight on pay-per-view. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. And it's impossible for me to bet against him. I wonder how much uh, his it, fist it is, weighs. Just because I, lo- I love him. There's people that I love that I refuse to bet against, um, no matter what. Uh, McGregor's one of those guys for me. He probably always will be, um, it, mostly because we see him fight every single yeah. time in person. And I'm, you know, wherever we're at in Vegas, I will always throw money on McGregor, even though I knew he was going to lose to Khabib. There was still part of me that was like, ah, man, but what if? So, Francis, I, I just love watching him fight. I'm not betting against him. I'm, I, I just won't. I won't do it. Uh, what about you, Anthony? I wonder how much uh, one of his fists weighs. Oof. Nine pounds. Because the the, my guess. the formula for Forrest includes mass and velocity, right? right. So you got to measure. I would love to see. I wonder if Brinkus ever did any of the sports science stuff on uh, John Brinkus. Somebody on, like on that, his, yeah. On his fists, yeah. Yeah, because, uh, man, this guy is a fucking. Uh, he's six foot four, like 255. Yeah. Fuck that. Fuck every bit of getting hit by that guy in the face. Yeah. I'm not into it, man. Imagine you walk in, John, and that guy's hooking up with your wife. What do you do? I go somewhere else. Make him, <laughs> you make him breakfast and 
maybe light some candles. Yeah, whatever he wants. Whatever he wants. Go, you know? I mean, go get a like violin and start playing. That could be negotiated. You know, he is such an elite physical specimen. I he if he didn't grow up in in Batie, Cameroon, where the average citizen makes thirteen hundred dollars a year, mm-hmm. and he was born in this country, um, he would be Jadavion Clowney times yeah. ten. Like yeah. Brock Lesnar. Shake Brock Lesnar's hand. His fingers are short. He still wears a big UFC glove. He's got some depth to it. But when I shake Francis Ngannou's hand, it's encapsulating like my whole forearm. It's a <laughs> yeah. totally different thing. Yeah, he's got lunchbox so, hands. You're wise to bring that up. And uh, I do believe if he can become the UFC heavyweight champion, he is destined for major superstardom. The movie roles are already starting to come in. Yeah. I'm surprised it's taken him this long to become the champion i say that as if he is the champion but this is his 12th fight meaning that in his 13th that would be the earliest that he could win the heavyweight title uh which would be his second chance i I think eventually he'll get there but rosenstrike's got a lot of kickboxing repetitions and again if he's calling this guy out maybe he knows something but he's the underdog for a reason and he's undefeated so you know look (sighs) I just don't see Francis losing. I just don't see a world in that. And uh, especially with, with as many people <laughs> that are watching around the world uh, as it's going to be Saturday night, I just I don't see him losing uh, on this stage. And well, I'm he, unbelievably if, amped. I would be amped if this was the main card, you know? The, yeah, I mean, it could the, be. The it t- absolutely the, could be a main card, yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, look, he's the number one, for, for all intents, unless Cormier is planning to come back and fight again, which I'm not sure you would know more about that than I do. But uh, the main event, I should say, uh, not the main card. Yeah, for sure. Events, but, but essentially, uh, essentially, Ngannou is the number one contender right now because he's number two yeah. contender technically. Yeah. But I don't think Cormier is going to come back and fight, right? DC and Stipe will probably complete their trilogy. I think it'll be on Stipe's timeline, so probably mm. September, October. But yeah, the winner right. of this fight. I think part of the reason there's not an interim belt on the line is because they wanted to do right by D.C. and give yeah, them yeah. that trilogy opportunity. And it'd be weird to have an interim champion sitting aside and to have D.C. fight Stipe. But well, if D.C. wins, I'll though, go, he's go gonna, if D.C. wins, it's going to be an interim championship situation for Ngannou the next time because D.C.'s not going to stay around for another year and fight Ngannou probably, right? Yeah, I think D.C. would probably vacate the yeah. belt if he wins and then Stipe would fight Ngannou or whatever. But one thing I will tell you, we had a handicapper on our show Monday. His best bet on the entire fight car was under a round and a half on Ngannou Rosenstrike. So under seven and a half minutes. I don't know what the exact price is right mm. now. Right. I know we've had some crazy outlier type fights in the UFC heavyweight division that just don't have a lot of action. Yep. I just don't see this one going more than seven and a half minutes. But uh, Me neither. And, and on mybookie.com, uh, you can actually bet on the exact rounds on these, which mm. is great because that's what we love to do uh, is pick the rounds because then you can really boost up your odds. I've got him in one. I, I don't see it going past the first round, me personally. Um, but, you know, uh, that that's, uh, seven and a half I like a lot. If, that, if you're down in a, a round and a half, that's a great bet because mm. um, yeah. it's – it's either going in the first or he's going in the first two minutes of the second. There's no way he's lasting past that, in my opinion. I think so. I mean, there's always some anxiousness when you're betting unders, whether they're in fighting or football, right? It's Vegas was obviously built on people banging the overs. I, I never play totals, right? Maybe in combat sports I would, but never in the NBA or baseball. I steer clear of totals. If anything, I'm always on the under. And Yeah, I like under seven and a half minutes. So, uh all right, boys, UFC Bantamweight Championship is the co-main event here, and this one is uh, close to my heart. You know, Dominic Cruz, my longtime yeah. broadcaster, and for one reason or another, I've never called his fight before. He hasn't fought since 2016 and essentially needed a global pandemic as the last variable <laughs> to, to dump a couple guys and get that title fight as the consensus greatest Bantamweight of all time. He's fighting a primed Henry Cejudo, Cejudo minus 250, and Dominic Cruz about plus 195 at my bookie. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on Dominic's chances here, guys? Oof, it's it's tough because this is your beef fry. This is your best friend, you know? Uh, you're, you're there with him every day. I follow your Instagram. By the way, if you're not following John Anik on Instagram, you should. You're, it's, you're one of my favorites on Instagram. You posted uh, a picture the other day of, of, of you crying. It was, it was a meme of you crying uh, talking about your beef fry here. Uh, Dominic fighting and uh, what that was going to be like calling the fight and everything. And uh, I think it would be great if uh, let's just say in the event that your boy does get beat, you jump into the ring and hit uh, Cahuto with a fucking, 
just come out, yeah. come at him with a chair like Macho Me and Randy Savage off the top rope. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Yeah, like no. Uh, as far as the fight goes, man, these are two of the best Bantamweight fighters of all time right here. Like this, it's it's incredible that this is that that it's a that's a split card like a main card. Yeah, uh, and is you know it? I mean? I, I, this is the most awkward I've ever felt making a prediction in the history of our show because it's your best. Fr- and and I've got to go, Henry, on this one, and I'm so sorry. Ah, uh, oh. okay, man. You know, I I think I'm if sorry. you know Don's story, <laughs> yeah. then if he can win this fucking thing, it might be the the greatest comeback story in not just fighting but in pro sports i mean you guys would know better than i would probably but i'm talking about five major surgeries all Mm -hmm. of which he had to go under for three acls had a catheter in one not catch right and had to get that one re-repaired majorly invasive shoulder surgery huge surgery in his arm from throwing a spinning back fist and when we would do television work guys he would have to tape his feet just to put dress shoes on for years getting botox shots in the feet oh. so if he wins this fight uh and not to say he can't too because physically right now despite everything i laid out he's fucking great mm. but if he can accomplish this I, I i there are no words it would be hard to put any athletic accomplishment that i've seen above that how yeah. emotional will you be uh calling this fight if he does win because again you have such a personal relationship with him um i would imagine that's got to be tough um, so Henry Cejudo, his opponent, thankfully is a friend of mine, which makes it a little bit easier. Okay. And I do have personal relationships up and down this roster. Sure. When the fight is going on, there won't be any emotion. There will be emotion when he walks out. And certainly if he wins, I don't know how I would handle that. If he were to finish Henry or something like that, I should probably give that some more thought so I don't butcher that. <laughs> but when the fight's actually going on, not that I need to be critical because I'm not really an analyst, but when the fight's going on, I'm not thinking about our friendship or, or us hanging out in hotel rooms. Really? About fight. Not at um, all. I, I certainly try not to. I mean, there are certainly times when you have a sick kid or you got something medically with your child and you try not to think about that over seven hours of a broadcast. So to me, it's they're two athletes. And uh, I really, at this point, you know, DC has been my longtime broadcast partner. I've had to call his fights and mm-hmm. he's been on the wrong end and the right end. And, Paul Feld or other guys. So once I can't wait for the first round to start, but the walkout, I'm a little anxious for. Okay, yeah, because it's like watching a Cowboys game and Troy Aikman's calling the game. I'm like, come on, man, you're not going to be, yeah. you know. Uh, there, there's moments where they they cut back to Troy and Joe Buck, and Troy, his eyes are redder than normal, and he's you know clearly yeah. been blazing <laughs> all day, and he's always yeah. this close from just saying. God damn it. I could complete every throw that Dak can't throw right now. You know what I'm saying? You're like, you're this close. I feel like he's the guy of all the retired quarterbacks out there. He's the one that could probably just step in right now and still play. I don't know why I have that feeling. Oh, Troy Aikman? Yeah. <sighs> he's, he does have that, that cowboy sense I don't, yeah, to I don't him. know what still, it is. He's in great shape yeah. still, yeah. I feel like it's like, almost like Romo. I, I feel like Romo could play as well but for a different reason like he is he's smarter he yeah. might be like i know fitz magic went to harvard and shit and there's been a, a number like offensive linemen uh brilliant offensive linemen in the game but i think he might be the smartest football player on the offensive side of the ball that's ever existed maybe and i think ray lewis is probably the hit the converse of that on the defensive side he's like this he, he might be the Lawrence, guy Lawrence taylor's my guy on that yeah but he, he was pure arms. he was pure like rage Ray Lewis it like openly admits like Brinkus talks about all the time to I'm not as fast as or as strong as some of these other guys, but he looks faster and stronger than everybody because of how smart he is, and that shit goes a long way in my book. Yeah. So with this fight in, in particular, by the way, I'm going to bet Henry, but I will be rooting for Dominic. There's losses I won't mind taking, betting on some shit just right. because right. of the story. Um, you know, not just for sports, but for the the show and everything else where you're just like, man. There's guys you just root for, and you don't know if they're going to win. And, and to compare it to somebody, I would compare Dominic to kind of like Alex Smith. I watched his you know, uh, E60 the other day. I don't know if you caught that. Um, but you know, going through his many surgeries and everything that he's gone through, like I hope Alex Smith comes back and plays football one day, even though I wasn't the most gigantic fan of Alex Smith. With Dominic, I'm the same way, man. Like I hope he wins, and I won't mind losing the 200 bucks, you know, on, on Henry, but – Money wise, I have to tell the audience. Yes, bet on Henry. Either way, it's going to be a good fight because both of these guys historically have shown that they can take punishment. Yeah. Like, and speaking of that, the next fight, the the main Woo. fight, these guys, 
I don't. Somebody might die. <laughs> like honestly, because neither one of these motherfuckers will stop. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like somebody's I, gonna have to step in and stop this fight at some point, even if nobody's winning. Yeah. You don't need me, right? Like, yeah. obviously, violence is the buzzword for this fight. These are the two guys who are most willing, maybe on the entire roster, to go to those dark places. They want to be in those mm. those dark places, right? Justin Gaethje wants to break his nose in the fight. Yes. Right? That's what he said this week. Yeah. Right? So it is truly as good and as violent a matchup as we can put together. And, and I talk about the heavyweight outliers, some – fights where there's inaction and you don't know why mm -hmm. it's impossible for this fight not to be gory never mind exciting you know um i just think that they're both so high level and so mm -hmm. when you have two guys who are that ferocious and just have that screw loose in the best of ways you parlay that with elite mixed martial arts skills and the recipe is that, that it could be the fight of the year it could be the best sporting event of the year and uh i'm happy for gaichi uh because he's just so deserving you know of the opportunity to prove that everything he did outside the ufc uh was not a fluke that he's mm. truly one of the best lightweights in the world i mean i can't fucking wait i cannot wait i cannot wait either and it, so i have a weird one on this one i have a weird call on this one if this fight would have gone off when scheduled i, I would have said ferguson now that Justin has had more time to prepare and know who, who the opponent is and all that other stuff. I'm going to say Justin in this one. Um, and, and I know that that sounds bizarre, but before the last one, he said, look, when I get into the ring on Saturday night, which didn't end up happening, he was like, I'll be at about 85, 90% on this one, right? Now he's at extra time. And uh, I think it's going to be Justin on this one. Uh, that's, that's where my money's going. Maybe. On. I mean, he's so he was a collegiate wrestler, right? Mm -hmm. But 18 of his wins are by knockout. 18 of his, what, 21 or 22 wins, whatever he's got. Like, he's he's <laughs> he's a tough motherfucker, but he's also, like, adapted. He's changed over the years, his yeah. fighting style and stuff, to become, like, not just a great wrestler. Because you see the guys from the early UFC days, like Dan Severn, for example. You were talking about how a lot of heavyweights don't na naturally generate the same punching power. That dude couldn't punch his way out of a wet paper bag, I don't think. Uh, but he would fucking uh, grab you up like a bear and squeeze you to death. Yeah. Uh, this guy, Gaethy, man, he's uh, he's really transitioned from his early fighting days to now. And the, this is the problem when you get two guys like this in a, in a cage together, and both of them have strong jaws, and both of them like to stand up and fucking fight. You're going to see some action, man. Oh, so, no doubt about taking? it. And I do believe that one of them will probably end up you know, either twitching on the canvas or being separated from consciousness because of the the way the matchup plays out. Yeah. I just, I can't really see it going down any other way. You're right, though, about Gaethje in terms of the wrestling background. I didn't like to use that too much in modern day mixed martial mm -hmm. arts, but Ferguson is the great wild card, right? He'll make weight three weeks before a UFC championship fight. He doesn't even know at times maybe what he is trying to do, but he's a master at, at making adjustments, mm -hmm. at recovering when he does get hurt, which happens pretty frequently, yeah. despite the fact that he hasn't lost since 2012. It's a <laughs> fascinating matchup. It really is. But I think big picture for Tony – most people believe the later it goes, the more it favors him. And to your point, Ross, I'm not so sure because Gaethje, the extra three weeks that he's had, there's no overstating mm -hmm. the value of those three weeks. Yeah. He's had what amounts to a regular training camp mm -hmm. despite the climate we're in. Uh, and I do believe that at plus 145 that, that he is a live underdog for sure, and I can understand why yeah, you I'm, see that. I, I mean, I'm going to bet on Gaethje for sure because cause I think this is – I wouldn't say a toss-up. I think, uh, you know, they're – each, each guy has, has their advantages. I think Gaethje's probably going to win this fight, but I would bet it anyways, even if I thought it was a coin flip because the odds are better yeah. to win more money, right? And like I, on Either one of these guys, like if there's not going to I, I highly doubt there's going to be one fist or foot-to-face connection, and that's the end of the fight. I think both guys are going to get it popped three to five times, like really hard, and there's going to be blood. And it's probably going to end somewhere in the third, like mid third round. Yeah, as far as round wise, I'm going under four, um, and I'm going right around that 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 three round is where my money is going on. Is this, this. a title fight? Um, yeah, this this yeah. is it. Uh, this is the big so it's one. Five rounds. Um, so I'm going right around that that third round is where my money's mm -hmm. going. I'm going to go uh, gagey on this one. And uh, we had a friend, uh, Tim Kennedy, uh, who you know, um, who got a fight canceled uh, and then had to come back you know, a month later or whatever it was, and he had cut weight and then had tried to get ready again. 
Um, and he had told us personally, he was like, man, that it really, really fucked me up. Um, and so I think there's going to be a bit of that as well. And uh, I'm just, I'm going to go Justin on this one. I, that's a gut call. And this, because well, this really is a coin toss. A lot of people who think that what Tony Ferguson did was ill advised, you know, far be it from me, from my perch to, to doubt anything that Ferguson does in preparation. Most lightweights, though, in that division, mm -hmm. they, it's not physically possible. Like Gaethje doesn't cut a lot of weight. Maybe he could have done it, but it's not physically possible for a lot of these elite lightweights to do a championship cut three weeks before right. a title fight. So we'll see <laughs> if it has any impact on, on Tony, positive or negative. But, uh, it's just going to be crazy to have a fight of this magnitude in an empty arena. Yeah. And when I say empty, you know, our production staff's not even going to be in there. Uh, it, it's going to be wild, man. I can't even, I can't even begin to think about a fight of that magnitude happening without fans who are like the lifeblood of our sport. I think uh, UFC should have hung a bunch of like uh, uh, cables and branches and shit in there and just have orangutans and chimpanzees. Just <laughs> Going well, around the audience doing great, throwing their shit on people. Here, here's the thing for the, the Korean baseball players yeah, that we were talking robots. about. they uh, fucking robots. They've got cardboard cutouts with masks <laughs> on. So they've got fans wearing masks on and the cardboard cutouts sitting in the stands. That's too yeah. much for me. Yeah, uh, I'm not doing that. And real quick here, before we let you get out of here, uh, Wednesday, May 13th. Are you doing those fights as well? I am doing those as well, yes. We'll go through the three here, if you don't mind. Uh, we'll go through the, the lightweights here. Alexander Hernandez and Drew Dober. Um, that is a hell of a fight. It is. That is a hell of a fight. Alexander Hernandez is the guy entrenched in the top 15 who probably has the bigger signature wins on paper. But Drew Dober is Justin Gaethje's right hand man right mm -hmm. out of that camp. And I think Dober is actually a slight favorite right now, if I'm not mistaken. He is. I thought Hernandez would have been the slight favorite, but a pick em fight. Dober is really the Nebraskan entering his fighting prime. We'll see what he has for Hernandez. Hernandez one of the most impressive just individuals that I've met, uh, just a cerebral kid who, who who knows exactly what he wants out of life and uh, will fight anybody. Alexander Hernandez is very much a throwback. There's no one he would say no to, and I respect him a lot for that. So, yeah, that's a great fight. That uh, Yeah, that's on the Wednesday show. That's we on the Big Wednesday ben show? Rothwell there. Yeah. Uh, he's against uh, Ovince, uh, <laughs> St. Saint, Peru. Saint yeah, so Ovin St. Pru played football at Tennessee <laughs> mm -hmm. and was moving up to the heavyweight division to take on Ben Rothwell. So we'll see how OSP's frame and power and body translates, but he certainly got a lot of uh, speed advantages, I would think, against Ben Rothwell, who's a little bit more laboring. God love the king of Kenosha. And then we got the light heavyweight main event, a guy you guys know, Anthony Lionheart yeah. Smith, about minus 170 or so uh, against the fellow former world title challenger, Glover Teixeira. So Anthony Smith's got a lot to prove. Uh, and obviously he had a fight <laughs> with an intruder in his home that was very serious that I probably shouldn't laugh about a few weeks ago. So I'm actually talking to Anthony Smith after I talk to you guys, mm -hmm. but he'll have a different type of fight that's regulated here in a few weeks. Yeah, yeah. exactly. We got a chance to talk with uh, Anthony about a week ago. Uh, great guy. You're going to have a hell of an interview with him. I'm rooting for him personally just mm -hmm. because of what he went through. And, and when you hear the story out of his mouth, it's hard not to root for him. Uh, my only regret is that the fight isn't in his living room because um, yeah. I'd like to yeah. see his, his wife right. and kids up, upstairs I'm watching pretty sure, it from above. I'm pretty sure his wife and kids are glad <laughs> not to have a second fight in their house within a month. Crazy. Craziest story ever. Well, and don't you think that, like, not that fight night is going to be more liberating necessarily, but at least you know what you're getting into. Like, that can't be bad training. To have a fucking D1 wrestler come into your house in the middle of the night. I think those are good repetitions that could help him make Yeah, you didn't knock him out. It wasn't a knockout, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the refs had to stop it, but it definitely wasn't okay. a knockout. So. Yeah, I put him away, yeah. Yeah, if, there, if someone had better training during the quarantine than Anthony Smith, tell me who it is. <laughs> um, I'm going to take Dober as well in that other fight, uh, just because he's been training uh, the entire time with Justin, so... Uh, John, thank you for being with us. We appreciate it. All eyes will be on you Saturday night, my man. And uh, it's good to have live sports back. It's good to have you back, and it's great to see you working. Great to see you guys. Always enjoy chatting with you. You know that. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys on the road soon. I feel for you guys. I know you're in the live event business as much as anybody. And mm -hmm. uh, yep. we look forward to you drinking bros back out on the road doing what you guys yes, do sir. best. So thanks for having me. And uh, Come to Vegas, bro. We're probably going to do like 10 shows in a row in Vegas. I know, get, right? get your bodies yeah. out there. But, hey, do, we'll do be your there. tickets? Like, are you going to have tickets for this? Like, 
you oh you can use my two tickets anytime you want but yeah no no no, 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 no. Fans. yeah that's what i was gonna say we we never do we never take anybody's tickets we always buy our own because we're we're, know, we're gentlemen yeah, like that but for you like is there gonna be tickets eventually for any of this stuff or is it just fanless for the rest of the year I find it hard to believe that there will be fans for the rest of 2020, maybe late in the year domestically, but uh, I think I'm putting the passport away for the rest of 2020, and I'm not complaining about that. No, not at all, and I'm sure your wife isn't either. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, John, best of luck Saturday night. We're looking forward to it. Uh, tune in. It's pay-per-view, ESPN Plus, Saturday night. You see John Anik in action. Some might say he's he's sexier than the entire card going on. You know? Yeah, like I said, if your boy starts losing, jump in there with that fucking chair, dude. I told you. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. I mean, even in this COVID nineteen climate, right? Just balls to the wall, yeah. put the mask on and go fight Cejudo. I yeah. might just have to just go it. reverse Khabib, jump in to the jump. <laughs> on. So, uh, yeah. uh we look forward to seeing the memes after Saturday night. John, thanks for joining us, buddy. Thank you, boys. Love you. Talk to you soon. Right, For you John Anik, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone. <laughs>